We only need two buttons to control the entire user interface for this project, and the easiest way to do that is using navigation bar buttons. So, open main.storyboard, then embed this view controller inside a navigation controller, and then that's our entire UI done. I'll just move it slightly to make my life easier. It looks nicer. There we go. Boom. Okay, back in view controller at Swift, I'll hide this right hand bar here. We're going to add our two bars in code. One we'll call a method called register local, and the other we'll call a method called schedule local. So I'll say at obc func register local. The other one is at obc func schedule local, like that. Boom. Those are two methods our buttons will call. And now, if you did low, we'll make the buttons. We'll say navigation item dot Left bar button item is a UI bar button item. For the title, we'll say register. Style is dot plane. Target self. Action will be hash selector. Register local. And then copy and paste that. Boom. We'll say uh, right bar button item. This will be schedule. And selector schedule local. Boom. So two bar button items calling our two methods down here. Okay, time to explain how this project has to work. First, you can't post messages to the user's lock screen unless you have their permission. This is a sensible restriction. It would, after all, be awfully annoying if any app could bother you when it pleased. So, in order to send local notifications in our app, we first need to request permission. And that's what we'll put into this register local method here. You register your settings based on what you actually need, and that's done with a method called request authorization on UN user notification center. For this example, we're going to request an alert, i.e. a message to show, along with a badge for our icon, and a sound. You also need to provide a closure that will be executed when the user has granted or denied your permissions request. This will be given two parameters, a boolean that would be true if permission was granted, and an optional error containing a message if something went wrong. All this functionality is contained in a framework called User Notifications. So before continuing, we'll add an import for that now. Up here, we'll say Import User Notifications, a new framework. OK, let's go. Let's change register local now. This is where we request permission to show notifications. We'll say let center equals UN user notification center dot current and then center dot request authorization for options what we want to show we'll do an array of dot alert dot badge and dot sound when I show a message put a badge on our icon and play a sound and for the completion handler what code to run when the user said yes or no to our request we will do trailing closure syntax and like I said, this takes two parameters, whether it was granted or not, and if there was an error. So I'll do granted, error, in. Inside here, if granted, I either said yes to this thing, we'll print yay. Else, we will print though, like that. So they said yes to it, we'll print a happy message, otherwise we'll print don't. Now by the way, if you want to test allowing or denying permission, you can reset the simulator and run the app again to get a clean state. Go into the hardware menu, then choose Erase All Content and Settings to make that happen. Once we have user permission, it's time to call the Schedule Local method. This will configure all the data needed to schedule a notification, which is three things. What content to show, when to show it, plus a request, which is a combination of the content and the timing. So, inside Schedule Local, We'll start by saying let center equals un user notification center dot current. Get access to the current version of our user notification center, which is what lets us post messages to the home screen. Next, we'll define some content. We'll say let content equals a un mutable notification content object. This has several properties we can provide. We'll start by saying the title of our thing is going to be a late wake up 
call. And this title is shown in the bigger text on the notification when it flashes up on the home screen. Ideally, this should be a couple of words at most. Next, we'll provide some body text. This will contain your main text for the notification. For example, if it was a text message, an iMessage message, it might say the actual content of the message inside there. We'll say in here, content.body is equal to the early bird catches the worm, but the second mouse gets the cheese. Boom. So it can be longer text in the body. That's your main message. You can, if you want to, attach custom actions by specifying the category identifier property, like this. Content.category identifier equals, I'll use alarm. If there's custom data to attach, for example, some internal ID you want to be passed back to you when they launch the app from your notification, you can use a user info dictionary. For example, you might say this, content.userInfo equals a dictionary of custom data is fizzbuzz. But you could say user ID equals 123 or email address or message ID, whatever it takes to identify the thing attached to the notification uniquely. So when you launch the app from here, you'll know to show more information straight away. If you want to specify a sound, you can create a custom UN notification sound object and attach it using the sound property, or just use UN notification sound dot default, like this. Content dot sound is dot default, like that. The default built-in notification sound. So that's our content. This whole thing defines what should be shown inside the alert, or in our case, the sound, what it'll sound like. But that's the content of our notification. The next step is the trigger for notification, when it should be shown. And there are a few of these. We could have a calendar trigger that shows the notification at an exact time. It could be an interval trigger that shows it after a certain time has elapsed. Or it can be a geofence that shows it based on the user's location. So as they leave a certain environment, for example. In this instance, we'll make a calendar notification, an exact time, 10.30 in the morning. We're going to say as our trigger, var date components equals a new date components. Date components dot hour is 10, so 10 a.m. And date components dot minute is 30, so half past 10. Then wrap that inside a UN calendar notification trigger, like this. Let trigger equals a UN calendar notification trigger. Using date matching, those date components. And now, if that should repeat or not, should it be 10.30 the next time, so next morning, or 10.30 every morning? I'll say repeat true, so it's 10.30 every morning. So now we have the content to show, that's up here, and when to show that content down here. The last part is to make a request, which ties the content and the trigger together. Now this has an identifier, which is a string you create. It can be whatever you want, but it does need to be unique because it lets you update or remove notifications programmatically. Apple's example for this is an app that displays live sports scores to the user. What the user really wants is for the existing notification to be updated with new information rather than have multiple notifications for the same app over time. For example, a goal was scored 1-0, 2-0, 3-0, 4-0. You don't want to see four different notifications. You want 1, 2, and 3 to go away and be replaced with 4. Now for technique projects, we don't care what names use each notification, but we do want it to be unique. So we're going to use UUID to generate unique identifiers. We used this before, so hopefully you're familiar. So we'll say, let request equals a UN notification request with identify being UUID dot UUID string. So a new random string, please. For our content, that's just the content constant. And the trigger is our trigger constant. And that's our full request. We can now say center dot add that request. This takes a completion handler, some code to run when that's being registered with the system. In our case, we don't care. So we'll just end the method saying just request like that. We don't care when it's finished. Now, if you want to test out your notifications, there are two more things that will help. First, 
You can cancel pending notifications, i.e. notifications you've scheduled that have yet to be delivered because that trigger hasn't been met yet, using the remove all pending notification requests method, like this. You might say up here, or we schedule new ones, center dot remove all pending notification requests. Ditch them all. Second, chances are you'll find the interval trigger far easier to test than the calendar trigger, because right now we've got to wait till 10.30 the next morning for our notification to appear. With an interval notification, we can say, wait five seconds, then show this thing. To do that, I will comment out line 47 and replace it with this line. Let trigger equals UN time interval notification trigger this wants a time interval, number of seconds, I'll say five seconds, and repeats will do false. So just do it once, not in five, 10, 15, 20, and so on seconds. Now with that code, we can hopefully run it and see how it looks. I'll press Command R to build and run my app using the iPhone XR simulator. Okay, so here's register and here's schedule. I'll press register. Boom, there's the alert from iOS saying, we'd like to include alerts, sounds, and badges. Do you want to allow it? I'll press allow, and you'll see yay appears down here in Xcode in our little log window, or at least A hidden by the Y originally. And now that's done, I'll press schedule, but first I want to show you under the hardware option here is command L, lock. Lock the device straight away. We want to see the home screen, remember, we want to lock the device. So what we want to do is, I'll press Schedule and then press Command L straight away to lock the device. After about four seconds, you know, four and a bit seconds, because we asked for five seconds, we should see our alert appear. So I'll press Schedule, then press Command L. Boom, there's our wake up call right there.